Okay, now um, let's talk quickly about how lines can intersect with circles. So if you have two secants, all right, these lines are secants because they're lines, not segments, that intersect the circle um, at two points. They can meet on the circle, all right? If that's the case, it creates an, ins an inscribed angle where this angle is half the measure of the arc. Or they can intersect inside the circle or outside the circle. Now, we've learned that if they intersect inside the circle and on the center of the circle, then this angle is going to be equal to the arc measure. So what we're going to look at now is what if they intersect somewhere in the circle that's not the center? And also, what if they intersect outside the circle? Are there relationships that we can use to find those angle measures? So let's look. So we have, um, let's look at GeoGebra. So I'm going to pause the video and set up GeoGebra. Okay, so I made a circle on GeoGebra. And now I'm going to create two chords by making two line segments that are, have endpoints on the circle. Okay, then I'm going to find these angle measures and play around with it. Oops, that's a mistake. Um, let me finish this. Okay, so now I have this setup where I have the two intersecting chords, all right, and they meet at an angle that's 80.1 degrees. This 102.1 is this central angle, DAC, which also equals this arc measure, DC. And this central angle, 58.1 degrees, uh, is angle BAE. Um, so that's a central angle, so that's the measure of arc BE. So for about 10 seconds, I'm going to move these around. And I want you to see if you notice anything, any relationships between the arc measures, BE and DC, and this angle formed when you connect D to F, or sorry, D to E, and B to C. All right, tell me if you notice anything about these measures. Well, obviously you can't tell me, but in your head, tell yourself, do you notice anything about these measures? I'm trying to get nice round numbers, but it's not working that well. Okay, um, if you want more time to think, I would pause the video now, or here's the answer. All right, this relationship is that these two chords form an angle measure, 85. That's the average of these two angle measures. All right, so when you have chords intersecting inside the circle, they're going to form um, angles that, so these angles here are going to be the average of these two arcs. And a little relationship between that rule and the rules that we already know is like, okay, let's say that these two intersect on the center. Now notice how all these angles are 100 because if they intersect on the center, then this is a central angle, so it's going to equal the arc. All right, or let's say they intersect on the circle. All right, uh, that's not how what I wanted. Here we go, 50. Okay, now it intersects on the circle, so it's like the average of 100 degrees and 0 degrees. All right, in this case 50.2 because it's the average of 100.5 degrees, that central angle. So you know, that rule also applies to what we already know, inscribed angles and central angles. Um, so if chords intersect inside the circle, it's going to be the average of the arc. So you would add 140.5 and divide by 2. Oops, I don't know what happened. But divide by 2 to get, well, add the arcs and divide by 2. Sorry, that was messed that up at the end there.